my gosh, guys, this is it. 2019 is almost over. So ever since January this year, I've been so excited to do this end of the year. So now it's finally here. Let's start talking about my top 10 list for the end of the year, starting off with my top 10 favorite movies of 2019. Now, there's a couple things before going into this. First, I haven't seen every single movie that's came out this year. You know, movies like Hustlers, The Lighthouse, Knives Out, Marriage Story. I heard those movies were fantastic, but I haven't seen those movies yet. Some of the movies I haven't get time to see, and some of the movies that are basically coming in 2020, those movies, I just, I haven't seen them. I just never get time to see these movies. And also, this is my subjective list. If you think there are movies that are like, oh, you gave me an A plus there and you gave me an A minus there, it's not about the rating. It's just how much I was entertained by these movies. So, let's start off with some honorable mentions before we get to the final top 10. So, the honorable mentions are How to Train Your Dragon in the Hidden World, John Wick Chapter 3 Power Rebellion, Shazam, and Don't Kill Me for This One, Aladdin, Rocket Man, Spider Man Far From Home, Jojo Rabbit, Ad Astra, and Haunt. Those movies I love. I thought those movies are masterpieces, but sadly enough, they're not in the final top 10. So guys, no time to wait. It is time. It is time to talk about my top 10 favorite movies of 2019. So let's get started with number 10. Yeah! 10. So we're going to start off with number 10 with Us. This is Jordan Peele's new movie. Jordan Peele, who directed Get Out, is basically the biggest surprise in horror movie director history. And now this is the second film I which in my opinion I feel it's better than Get Out. This movie is terrifying, it's original, Lupita Youngo, one of the best performances I've seen her in. This is a very suspenseful film the whole way through. And also he makes his comedy with it, which I think Jordan Peele is great at that. And usually horror movies aren't great at that, but Jordan Peele is great at doing those type of movies. Us, fantastic horror movie, that's why it's on my number 10. Nine. Coming to my number 9 is the best animated film of this entire year, and that movie goes to Toy Story 4. I love Toy Story 4, and the thing about Toy Story 4 that's really weird is that we still don't need a Toy Story 4, but this movie is still fantastic. The characters are still there, the animation is just phenomenal the whole way through from start to finish. The opening through the animation needs to get nominated for Best Anime Film, like absolutely. This film still follows the same part as the Toy Story movies, and new characters are really great in the movie. It's just a really good time, and thank God we got a Toy Story 4. I gotta say, Mike Flanagan is one of the best horror directors ever, and everyone should just notice him and appreciate him, because Doctor Sleep is probably the best movie that Mike Flanagan has ever done. You know Mike Flanagan, he directed Hush, Gerald's Gang, great movies, and I think the sequel to The Shining, Doctor Sleep, is probably the best movie he's ever done. And you can see that he's very inspired by Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, which is one of my favorite horror films of all time, so when I heard he's going to direct the sequel to The Shining, I got nervous and excited at the same time, thank god this movie didn't suck. Doctor Sleep was awesome. Ewan McGregor was great in the movie. Rebecca Ferguson, one of the best villains of this entire freaking year. This is a great pay homage to one of the greatest horror films of all time that Stephen King has hated. I don't know why he hated it, because The Shining is one of my favorite movies. Doctor Sleep is a very safe and very amazing looking sequel to one of the greatest horror movies of all time. Seven. Coming into my number seven is Quentin Tarantino's return with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I got a feeling this movie won't be on everyone's top ten list. To me, it's not the best Quentin Tarantino film, absolutely not, but as long as this movie entertained me, it's going to be on my top 10 best. And Once Upon a Time in Hollywood definitely entertain me. Leonardo DiCaprio is great, Brad Pitt, this is probably his best performance ever. Yes, Margot Robbie, a lot of people hate Margot Robbie. To me, I hate her at first, but when I watched the movie, I'm like, I'm starting to get her character and I really liked her in the film. From start to finish, this is a really interesting filmmaking type film, and the ending is something that I did not expect, and it's one of the best Tarantino endings, and probably one of the best Tarantino scenes that I've seen in this film career. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood really kicks ass. Six. Coming to my number six is probably the biggest surprise of the year. Ready or not, it's just goddamn awesome and goddamn fun at the exact same time. This movie is took a really simple concept, make that a hard film, make it one of the most craziest films of this entire year, and the more crazy it is, the more I freaking love this movie. This is probably one of the best horror films of the year in my personal opinion. I love Ready or Not. Yes, Doctor Sleep and Us is really great movies and it's definitely on my top 10. But I think Ready or Not, it definitely terrifies me and made me laugh at the exact same time. And kind of like Us, I don't think that would work, but this movie made it work. Ready or Not is just a really fun time for me. Alright guys, up to the top 5 best movies of 2019. Coming to my number 5 goes to Ford v Ferrari. Now, I'm not a huge 
car fanatic or car like expert or anything. But I don't think you need to be a car expert or fanatic to watch this movie. This movie is a great true story about these two guys in this really difficult situation making a car that's faster than Ferrari with the Ford brand. And I think Christian Bell and Matt Damon have some of the best chemistry that I've seen this entire year. This movie's funny, it has emotional moments, and it has some really intense moments. The last race in the third act is one of my favorite scenes in the entire year. One of the best cinematography that I've ever seen. Great job, James Mangold. You are one of the greatest directors out there. So thank God, Full of Ferrari was fantastic. Of course, of course I gotta put Avengers Endgame in my top 10 best. Like, you just gotta. This is a great three hours of my life and one of the greatest conclusions to a franchise like ever. I know this might not be the final Avengers film, but I think it's the final Avengers film for the oldies, you know, Captain America, Iron Man and all that stuff. And then the new Avengers will come, maybe the young Avengers will come. But this movie is one of those movies that I literally was like, this is worth the three hour mark. Not like Styles of Rise of Skywalker had to be all rushed. Avengers Endgame is smoothly and well freaking done. The action was great, the final act is absolutely amazing, it has one of the most emotional endings that I've seen in the MCU like ever. What I have to say about Avengers Endgame? It's one of the highest grossing movies of all time, yes it's on my number four because there are three movies that basically I like better than this movie, but still Avengers Endgame, phenomenal and one of the better comic book movies out there. Coming into my number three is Martin Scorsese's return with The Irishman. This movie is three freaking hours and 30 minutes long. Like, that's a long movie. But what's great about The Irishman is that the story just gets more interesting, the characters are fantastic, and that is goddamn Martin Scorsese. He knows what he's doing. But not just this is a return from Martin Scorsese, it's a great return to Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, and Al Pacino. Joe Pesci is back. I thought he retired, but now he's back in this movie, and this might be his final movie he's going to do. Great conclusion in his acting career because he was fantastic in Irishman. He definitely needs to get on it for Best Supporting Actor. This movie, it's just great. The narration was fantastic. The story was great. Definitely worth another three hour and 30 minute mark. The Irishman, freaking great. <laughs> now, number two and number one, it's like, I could just put them both in my number one, but I just gotta figure out which movie I like better than my number two. So, for now, my number two goes to Joker. Probably one of the best acting performances that I've ever seen this year. Walking Phoenix needs to get a Best Actor nomination. But also, since Batman Begins, this is one of the greatest origin story ever since that movie. What's great about Joker is that it doesn't feel like a comic book movie at all. It felt like a film, and that's what I wanted Joker to be, and I think Todd Phillips does a great job directing this movie. This movie is so suspenseful, very, very disturbing, very emotional. This is not a happy film to see. But what's great about this movie, Joker keeps you more interesting, and you do feel bad for the villain, which is something that's never been done many times, and I think Joker does that well. The final act, holy shit, one of the best. I loved it. Walking Phoenix needs that Oscar nomination. Probably since he flies at Walking Phoenix is the best Joker. Better than Jerry Lowe, absolutely. Yeah. Alright guys, my number one, my favorite movie of 2019. Now this is the movie that made me cry the most, that made me laugh the most, that made me suspense the most. This is the movie that I was very blind by and thank Christ I saw this movie. My number one goes to Parasite. Now, as I said before, I have not seen any trailers for the movie, I have not seen any posters for the movie. All I've heard is that people saying this is a great masterpiece and this is the best movie of the year. Parasite is absolutely my favorite movie of this entire freaking year. It's one of the best acted films of the year. It's one of the best comedies of the year. It's one of the best suspenseful thriller movies of the year. This is what I call a freaking film. Everything about this movie is great. The cinematography, the story throughout. I was never bored throughout this movie. And it's a movie that I've just never seen any marketing to. And this movie makes it more special. I can't believe it's coming on Blu-ray and I'm going to be the first one to buy Parasite. This movie is just awesome the whole way through. Hopefully, I'm just hopefully Parasite goes to the Oscars because if it doesn't, I'm just going to go to the Oscars, sneakily hijack the Oscars and put Parasite in one of the nominations. I don't care if it's over Doctor Sleep or anything. It needs to be there. Like, honestly, Parasite is my favorite movie of 2019. Great job, Parasite. You've been my favorite movie of 2019. So, guys, that is it. My top 10 best movies of 2019. My top 10 worst movies of 2019. It's coming soon, of course. But, guys, let me know down below what are your top 10 best movies of 2019 or your top 20. Doesn't matter. I want to know your picks. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you guys follow me on Facebook, Stardust, Instagram, Twitter. Keep contact with me and make sure you guys subscribe to my channel and notify for my latest reviews. And 
Have a nice day.